Silver coins are a type of currency that is minted using silver as the primary metal. These coins hold both monetary value and inherent worth due to the precious metal they contain. Throughout history, silver coins have played a significant role in trade, commerce, and wealth preservation. Beyond their practical uses, silver coins hold cultural and historical significance. They reflect the artistry and craftsmanship of the minting process and often depict important moments or figures from a nation's history. The first step in the process is obtaining pure silver. Silver is commonly found in ore form, which is then processed through various techniques such as smelting and refining to extract pure silver. Once refined, the silver is usually formed into bricks or bars for easier handling. The next crucial step is silver melting, turning it into a scorching liquid at incredibly high temperatures because the melting point of silver is about 961 degrees Celsius, which is about 1762 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the silver has reached its molten state, the next step is extrusion. The liquid silver is forced through a specialized dye, resulting in a continuous strip of metal with precise dimensions. This strip will serve as the foundation for each coin. Fun fact, the extrusion process allows for intricate designs to be imprinted on the coins, showcasing the artistry and creativity of the mint. It's a delicate balance between technology and craftsmanship. As the extruded strip cools down, it is carefully sliced into small circular blanks, known as planchets. These planchets will soon take shape as the actual coins we admire. Each blank undergoes meticulous inspection to ensure it meets the stringent quality standards set by the mint. The weight and dimensions of the planchets are precisely controlled to ensure consistency in every coin. It's this attention to detail that guarantees a remarkable level of craftsmanship. Now that we have the blanks, it's time to give them their distinctive brilliance. Through a process called burnishing, the blanks are placed in a rotating drum alongside tiny stainless steel pins. As the drum rotates, the pins gently rub against the blanks, smoothing their surface and creating a captivating shine. Burnishing not only enhances the coin's aesthetic appeal, but also helps to harden the metal, making them more durable and resistant to wear over time. It's the secret behind their lasting beauty. And now, for the grand finale, the striking of the coins. Each blank is meticulously positioned in a precision machine called a coining press. With incredible precision and force, the blank is struck between two engraved dies, one for the obverse and one for the reverse. The dies used in the coining press are replaced regularly to maintain the sharpness and detail of the coin's design. It's a testament to the commitment of the mint to produce coins of exceptional quality. But our journey doesn't end there. The freshly struck silver coins are carefully inspected for quality and accuracy. Highly skilled inspectors examine the planchets with precision and expertise. They scrutinize them for any imperfections or irregularities that could affect the final product. The mint's commitment to excellence doesn't stop there. Advanced technology, such as optical scanners, is utilized to detect any minute imperfections that might escape the naked eye. This ensures that only the highest quality planchets proceed to the next stage of the minting process. As the planchets continue their journey through the mint, a unique process called edge lettering takes place. This technique involves adding inscriptions or patterns to the outer edge of the coin. It enhances the visual appeal, provides valuable information, and acts as a security feature. Finally, the silver coins are ready for packaging. They are meticulously counted and sorted before being placed into protective cases or rolls, ensuring their safe storage and transportation. These coins are produced in mints worldwide, including the United States, Canada, Australia, Austria, and more. Bonus, silver extraction. Not only used for jewelry or silver, where 80% of the world's silver is mined for industrial purposes, silver is the most conductive and reflective metal on the planet. So for example, it's used in electronic components and in construction as an insulation coating on glass. The mining company prides itself on producing exceptional silver bars consisting of a composition that ranges from 93 to 97% pure silver. These meticulously crafted silver bars are then sold to a reputable refinery, where they undergo a series of meticulous purification processes. The action begins down in the mine, where geologists point a night on gun at various spots in the rock face. This remarkable device can detect the levels of 40 different elements, including silver. Contrary to common belief, natural silver is not silver-colored, but rather charcoal gray. The deposits that resemble silver are actually composed of zinc and lead. Miners strategically drill holes in the identified silver-rich areas, guided by the expertise of geologists. 
and carefully insert sticks of dynamite to facilitate the extraction process. Following the controlled blast, carts efficiently transport the chunks of rock, known as ore, to the surface. Geologists meticulously test and blend these ore piles to ensure a consistent silver content per kilogram. The ore first goes into the primary crusher. The machine's huge steel teeth break up the big chunks into smaller pieces. Those pieces then drop through grates below into the secondary crusher, which breaks them down into even smaller pieces. The ore chunks then enter vibrating cone crushers, where they undergo a pulverizing process, reducing them into finely fragmented pieces. Then a conveyor transports the crushed ore to the ball mill. At this point, the ore pieces are roughly six millimeters big. As the large cylinder of the mill rotates, steel balls within it energetically collide, grinding the ore into a fine powder through a dynamic and vigorous process. A water circulation system flushes the silver-rich powder from the mill's cylinder into large tanks, maintaining constant water movement for effective separation. To separate and dissolve the metals the powder contains, workers pour in acid. 72 hours later, the rock wastes now settled at the bottom. The solution containing dissolved silver is pumped through filter presses. The filter plates are treated with a zinc-based chemical, which attracts silver molecules. As the solution passes through, the plates trap particles containing silver, forming a layer of black powder called silver precipitate. This precipitate is composed of approximately 50% silver and 50% waste, the waste being a jumble of various metals, dirt, and other impurities. To separate the silver from the waste, they first dry the precipitate in a gas furnace for a couple of hours. In the mining company's lab, technicians continuously test ore samples to determine the grade the term for the quantity of silver per kilogram of ore. They heat the samples to 1,093 degrees Celsius for about an hour to burn off the impurities. What's left after the burn off are the silver and other metals such as lead zinc, copper, selenium, and cadmium. Lab technicians then treat the samples with a chemical that prevents silver from burning off and put them back in the oven. When the samples come out about an hour later, all the other metals have burned off and only silver is left. They weigh the silver and compare it to the weight of the original sample in order to calculate the grade. The key to running a profitable mine is to ensure that the grade is consistently within certain parameters. Back at the mill, workers put the now dried silver precipitate into an oven along with chemicals, which prevents silver from burning off. Approximately four hours later, the silver and waste have separated and melted. Workers pour them into bar-shaped molds. The silver being heavier settles at the bottom. Workers skim off the waste floating on top. In less than five minutes, the molten silver cools and hardens, enabling workers to extract what is now a silver bar. The mining company sells the bars to a refinery for processing into industrial-grade silver.